Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, just again, a quick introduction. So my name is Rob Brodecki. I am one of the application portfolio managers with KUKA. Uh, I am located in North America and act as a kind of a bridge between uh, North America and our headquarters in Germany. Um, also, I'm very proud and happy to be able to bring newer solutions like this uh, here to the U.S. to and introduce to our customers and par partners. Uh, so this, I've just again, I've been a little back on, I've been with KUKA for about a year now, uh, been in the industry about six years now, and my focus is, uh, throughout my career has been mostly on material handling and also CNC machine automation and machine tending, which uh, this solution is uh, one of those target applications. So. Today, I want to talk a little bit about, again, what the application of bin picking is, um, introduce the product to you, and then go into some details about it. And we'll also be able to do some demos, uh, digital demos, showcasing the different screens and simulations that are available as part of this solution. So we're going to start just when you generally look at bin picking as an application. It's one of the, you know, we've been working on it for a while now. It's got, there's a lot of good solutions out there. There's not good solutions. And uh, they can be pretty tricky to set up. You know, there's a large variety of parts. They are often going to be difficult to recognize and grip. Um, there's not always a really smooth interaction between the image, uh, the vision side, uh, giving image recognition, and then the robot motion planning. Uh, and then, so this all really creates a high cost effort on it. You do really need a lot of expert knowledge to do these applications. Um, now for KUKA, traditionally, we've been working with a lot of third partners on this one. This smart, but smart bin picking was our, our go at making it, hey, let's let's try to make one a lot easier to interact with KUKA so that, yes, you could use those third party ones, but there's this one with that KUKA has provided that is easier to use. And we've also added some extra benefits to it uh, because we know all of the dynamics of our robots. So when we look at like a solution, oh, hold that wrong button. Uh, get got got the mistake out of the way early at least. So, when we look at the solution, all right here we go. All right. So when we look at third-party solutions, so a lot of them, they are very good on the vision side. They're coming from vision companies. They are fantastic at recognizing the parts. But when you look at, so this is an example of a key ends one. When you look at the movements of the robot, it's all linear motion. They don't really understand the dynamics of our robots, and so they're limited in terms of the actual movements that they can do. And plus, when we look at collision detectors and avoidance, which is what they're trying to do with this, they can really only account for the tool and the part. They don't, again, they don't really know the robot side as well. Now, uh, conversely, when we look at you know, our KUKA smart bin picking solution, we understand our robot dynamics. And so we are able to create movements that are smoother, that are point to point, that have a quicker, mo that and provide a, a quicker motion and speed along with a, um, what's wrong, along with collision avoidance across the whole robot arm and singularity free movement. So you're really able to push the limit in terms of what you can get in terms of your speed and cycle times with this while ensuring that you're not getting any uh, safety collision or singularity situations. All right. So now let's take a look at what actually, you know, what does this solution consist of? So, which actually it's a combination of, you know, KUKA, we do the robot side stuff and we partnered up with Roboception, who have a lot of experience in the vision side to do the part recognition and the vision side of things. Uh, and so just a little bit of technical thing. So this is a software solution that works with our newest line of robots. This solution only came out in the November, around November of 2022, so just last fall. So it works with KSS 8.7 and our KRC5 or C5 Micro. One, so this is the latest models, and then the Roboception IPC. You do need their industrial PC to run some of the software, and we'll go over how that breaks down later. But through this system, what we really also try to do is, you know, with this, you get easy configuration and handling via web UIs, and we'll show you this earlier. So it's it's very clear, easy to understand 
uh, menus and screens that you use to set up their system so that, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm marketing. I'm not an engineer by trade. I am marketing and sales history, but I've been able to understand how to set one of these up using the system. Uh, and then we work with Roboception to handle the vision as they are the vision experts. Now, the other thing you'll notice, there's a couple of things. So parallel and outsourced path planning and optimized path planning without collisions and singularities. And the way that we've done this is we've actually taken our path planning capabilities and moved them from the robot controller and onto that IPC. So while the robot is moving and doing one action, you're actually able to take the vision, the images that Roboception has spotted and identified and plan out your paths uh, for the next movement. So you're able to create that quicker cycle time, less time in between cycles, in between actions. So you can keep moving and keep in production there. And then again, AI CAD based CAD model recognition. This is uh, Roboception's area and we will get into that a little bit later as well. So as I said, when we take a look at what this actually constitutes, we're, when we break it down, there's both KUKA elements and there are Roboception elements. So on the KUKA side, again, we focus on creating software that allows it to interact with our robot and be programmed and interfaced very easily, and then to provide that dynamic and smart, what we call the smart path planning. So when you're in the KUKA side, you get the KUKA option package, which is smart bin picking for currently just 1.0. And this includes some HMI and word visual plugins for quicker configuration and production setup. Uh, those web UIs that we said for configuration, diagnosis and testing, and that smart path planner. And that smart path planner is that key that allows us to have those, instead of linear movements, we're doing all spline point to point movements. And we're able to do this quicker and uh, on the IPC so that we can have those quicker cycle times. And again, that if we're gonna avoid the singularities and we're gonna avoid collisions across the whole length of the robot, not just the tool and the part. Uh, and then you also get KUKA Ethernet KRL as the communications method. On the RoboAception side, we've allowed them, you know, they're division experts and we want to lean off of their knowledge. So with them, we'll work to actually take the CAD match. Uh, so you get a CAD file, you get a lot of the details about the environment and the application and the setup to share it with them and then they will kind of help with choosing well, what get the correct 3D sensor and the projector, getting the industrial IP, the IPC. Uh, the, then we also have you know some different calibration plates, cabling and all of those. And then of course, the actual sending them the CAD file, them generating it. They have the CAD match software on the IPC running with our smart path planner. And this is what's actually going to do all of the recognition of your parts. Now, if you are a vision expert and a KUKA expert, which some of you are, you are free to do most of this on your own. Uh, just get the smart bin picking and Ethernet KRL package from us and then work with Roboception on all of the vision application specific things. Or you can also work with KUKA directly and we will handle everything. Uh, so you just work with us and we will work with Roboception and do everything in the back end, giving you guys as close to a plug and play solution as we possibly can. So again, what the solution looks like is uh, you've got on the control, you've got three different elements, basically. You've got your robot controller, uh, the KRC5, and this is going to have some smart HMI add-ons, KRL programs, and PLC interface. Then we've got an IPC that is running our web UI, our smart path planner, and Roboception's CAD matching software. Uh, and then just like any other robot uh, with KUKA, you are using excuse me, the work visual. So there is a uh, cop file, option program file, so that all of the menus and screens that you need for work visual configurations, um, which again, this is more of the general, the IOs, the basics of, uh, of setting up our, our robot, that is still gonna be done in the work visual environment. All right. So again, just a little bit more deeper information. So with this, we have, you know, within, the controller add-on. So we said there's smart HMI add-on. So you can see there's this little screenshot here. So this allows you for uh, you know easier and faster commissioning. You can do sensor configuration and calibration and I/O configuration through here, just the other applications. We've also provided inline forms. So obviously you can do the basic programming through uh, KRL in Word, uh, KSS, no KRL 
in work visual but you can also just got these inline forms that makes it very easy to trigger the necessary functions uh for smart pin picking with uh on the smith smart pad right uh, and then again all of the basic programming in general is generated in inside of the controller so that you're not having to do you know program anything from scratch everything is there it's generated and it just gets generated in the configurations that you set up all right the other part is and this is one of the big parts this is where you're going to be spending most of the time with the application so the uh, web view on the ipc as you said we've got three different things so the web ui so you can see a screenshots here and we're actually going to you know, i'm going to we're going to dig into these i've got a live demo cell that we can actually take a look at um but very easy and clear understandable steps and how you go through very easy to operate uh, and set up uh, and this is where you import all of the models this is where you do a whole lot of that setup uh, and for actually the application and then you can do for testing and diagnosis and you can see the simulations that are run at things here right. smart path planner also works on the ipc although again this is a this thing runs in the background so you don't really interact with it uh, and then CAD matching by Roboception, their software is also running on here and you can access it through a web UI the same. Um, so let's actually on that note, pull this up. So let me take a moment here. All right. So here we have the, uh, this is just a, uh, you know, I'm just a Microsoft Edge connected to uh you know just the i'm actually remotely connected uh into our de uh, demo test cell that we have uh, but all it is is again you're gonna connect to this ipc enter in an ip address and the correct like port numbers and things and then you'll be able to access both the uh, smart bin picking application side and the cad match side from robosoft from roboception so let's actually we're going to start off with the cad match because in a process this is going to be the first thing that happens is it will actually you know take the, the picture of it so first off and i'll go over the process more detail later but what you're going to do is you're going to get from uh, roboception they will take your cad file and they will run it through their software and this does all of the training so that what you'll get uh you know very quickly i think they can often do it overnight what you'll get is a um what you'll get is a file that you can upload into here uh and then from that you can have a number of different parts uh that you can choose so depending on how many parts you're doing for the cell uh we're going to be using this kuka nordic one here uh you know you can choose that and then you have a number of different settings here um so things like load carrier so this is accounting for the actual bin that it is the region of interest for 3d Collision check, we can avoid that because that's going to be handled by the Smart Path Plan and the KUKA side things here. Right. But you got some settings there and you also have settings down here. All right, so this is things you could do like edge sensitivity, the edge uh, distances, uh, different things here. Right. Uh, you can then, uh, what you'll notice is when you get this information here, you get maximum matches of minimum score. So these are just different ways that you could do to kind of save the maximum matches will save on the uh, processing time and the minimum score is really just kind of giving you a how confident you can be for a pick. But so you get all of those set up and then you could basically just hit detect objects. Uh, and this is going to take the picture and send over the scan time. Uh, and so it'll actually show you here, here's the acquisition time. So it took it less than a second to take the image and then less than three seconds to do the actual processing of the image. And what you get is all of these nice, you know, pick points. Hey, here's all of the different parts. Here's the score for the positions, uh, potential grassing points and things. But again, we're not working on that. The main thing here is this data here all gets sent over into the smart picking environment, the smart bin picking environment. Now, inside of the smart bin picking environment, uh, kind of going back actually, so what we do is Using KUKA Sim, you're going to build out your environment. So you're going to have your robot, you're going to have where your camera is located, uh, where your bin is. It's not here, but it'll show up uh, in a future screen. Uh, any work tables, the machines, any obstacles or things like that will all go into here. And so this is what builds out your cell. Now, additionally, you can also see you've got your gripper. 
uh, and you can have multiple grippers as well. Uh, you can just load this from a CAD file, okay, and you can kind of do some settings here to confirm it all works, all right? And you've got op different options for status, so big close, small open, completed open, small close, just depending on, you know, what you want to do. Are we in a pre-pick position? Are we doing the actual pick? Or what are we doing here? All right, you've got your part section. All right, and so again, we're going to choose the Kuken Nordic one. So here you can, again, it uploads the CAD file from the part, all right, and you can do here, you can provide a little buffer. You can choose how big of a buffer zone do I want on my, uh, on my pick? Do I want it to just be six millimeters? Do I want it to be 10 millimeters? Do I want it to be, you know, even more 20, depending on, you know, what part it is, where you're picking in, how much space, et cetera you can choose what your buffer zone is, and that's gonna to help to avoid the collisions there. Uh, discard changes, and oh, sorry. There's one thing again to note, just like with the uh, CAD match software, you can load up different parts here. So generally speaking, smart bin picking is not a random bin picking application. It is more for, hey, you know the parts that are going to be there, uh, and you want to, uh, you know, and you want to, and it's going to just be doing one or one at a time, basically, or one or two, depending on. You can do multiple ones at a time, just depending, and I'll go over that a little bit later. But generally speaking, you know, you're going to be doing one at a time within each application here, and you are going, you can switch easily though between them just by using these screens. So you can have multiple ones in here, all right. Uh, so just if you are at a shop where, hey, you're going to run, let's say we need to do a hundred or a thousand of this part and then we're oh that bin is finished let's do another one okay we can just switch it out here we can have all of them preloaded and ready to go all right uh when we look at the the application side and here is where we get again here's cad match detection parameter these are a lot of the different things that we talked before about minimum scores maximum number of matches etc edge sensitivity just things to kind of help with identifying parts more easily and, and uh, controlling the processing speed. Here are co some collision detection parameters that you can use uh, and configure to set up with. Uh, and then again, you're just choosing what your configuration is, what the bin, the sorting strategies, there's a number of different options. So highest match scores, top to bottom, uh, default just kind of being based on what uh, CAD match identifies as zero, one, two, three, four, and then the best uh, collision free path that it can choose. But, um then we actually look at the gripper points and so here is where you're going to actually you can choose multiple you can set up multiple uh different gripper options to actually do this so you're going to choose your gripper uh, and then you can go in and you can actually see we've got the cad file the 3d file of our gripper and of the part and each one of these yellow dots represents a possible pick point so we've got right now 24, it's a round item, it's perfectly good. But let's say, oh, let me pull up another one here. I think this one, yeah. So if we look at this one, we could see that if it approaches from the right side now of the part, it's going to hit another part of the part, the component. Uh, it's always going to be a collision. It cannot approach from this side without uh, colliding with something. So any, calculations that the smart path planner does each one of these dots is a, a potential path that it's going to do try to calculate so anything coming from this side it's automatically going to create a collision so having to calculate those paths is really just you know wasting resources so what you can actually do and uh you can go in and nope other way around uh let's see nope other way around. okay so sorry that's it 359 and let's try here from 180. Okay, there we go. So now what we've done is we've limited the range where it's going to actually go in. So any of these red dots, Smart Path Planner knows, nope, don't even think about doing a pick point here. It's not going to work. Don't even calculate one. So you're going to save resource time. So you're going to be able to go even quicker on that one. The other option that you could do here is you can actually change around, you know, how many potential pick points do you have? So we can go from 24 before to 12. So now we're only doing what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six possible pick points there. So it's gonna really speed up the potential. Uh, you know, you're gonna get higher processing, less potential pick points, less higher processing. So this is just something you can play with depending on what it is that you wanna do for it. 
right? And as you can see here, we said before, there's states like small close, you can do like a, all the way open, small open, pick close. This is really just choosing kind of like the, um, you know, how far we are to it. All right. So this is where you do all of the different setups in there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come into here into the test area. And this is, again, we have our environment and we have our things and we'll load it for our parts there. All right. And then what you're going to do is you just hit play and it is requesting the path planner results. So this took all of the data, all of this information from here, sent it to the smart path planner. And now the smart path planner is getting it from uh, or the UI is getting it from the smart path planner. All right. I'm on a Wi-Fi uh, connection right now, so that's why it's a little bit slower there. But uh, once it's in here, it's just like any CAD thing. You can move around and explore it just like any other you know, thing, you can side to side, whatever, zoom in. All right. Now, then you can see here, we can also mess with, with the, the settings here. So we can check out our bin, we can put it back in, we can take out the point card cloud. The point cloud, again, being what the actual vision system, the CAD match software sent over. So we could play with that. Uh, you could show way, way back. This just shows you, again, that the solid green line is the path into the, uh, into the bin, and the green dotted line is the path out of the bin. Right. You could do collisions. I'll show that a little bit more later. You can show your whole environment, take that out or not. You can even take out the robot if you so desire. All right, you got all the robot axes as well you can, and the gripper axes you can play with. I'm not going to touch those right now, though. But the main gist is that once you're in here, once you've got these loaded, you can choose a path. All right, so right now we've got oh, object three. So if you, you know, there were three, remember here we got three potential ones, uh, well, four, but we're going to go with object three. All right, and it actually shows you here's the path. And then you can hit play and you can actually observe along that path and see and it takes out and removes the path. Now, one of the big benefits, again, of the Smart Path Planner is that we are not only accounting for the gripper, the tool, and the part, we are accounting for the whole robot and the energy supply. So if you have any cables along here, if you've got any hoses or tubes or cables, anything that you need for like the, the same power or air or whatever to the gripper, right? All of that is going to be accounted for with the collision free avoidance thing. So this is where, again, one of those big keys to uh, using this system compared to a third party system is that we have the whole robot arm that we are accounting for. Uh, there was one of the solutions, I remember one of the installs that we had, they originally had mounted the robot up higher. It's on a pedestal. All right? And then what happened was that the robot arm was coming into contact with the bar that the camera is mounted on. So on a third party system, it can't really account for the robot arm. So you might be getting into this collision again and again. Luckily, because of smart, uh, smart pin picking is doing the whole arm, we knew, oh, okay, hey, there's a collision there, so we're not gonna do it. Um, and the way you can tell generally is again, here you'll see all possible paths. All right, and with it, you can see all of these check marks are, hey, yep, we are good, we could do that. Any of these X's are, no, it cannot do. Uh, and this one's pretty obvious, but you can see this giant red sphere that's coming in up. And this is the actual uh, collision point detection. So this is here in the settings, you know, we could play with it. So we can make it really big or, uh, if it's kind of hard to tell, you know, obviously this is hitting the wall of the bin, so it's easy to tell, but maybe it was a little harder to tell where exactly is the collision happening. You could make it smaller to kind of highlight the area a little bit more to get more of that pinpoint. So when you're troubleshooting and if you're seeing the wall, hey, we're not getting any potential pick zones, here's one area that you could look at. All right. So again, what you can also do is it logs uh, through this screen, you can go back and see uh, the last 100 possible ones. So everyone which says request successful, that means that, hey, we were able to get an image uh, information from the CAD match software and calculate some paths. If it was not, you will get some errors, uh, some messages here saying that an error happened, All right? You can also go into the logging situation again, and here you have a little more flexibility. You could download logs, you can do the full application. You could just do path planning ones. 
I, uh, you could do all of these different information. You got all these session logs. So there's a whole lot of information that, you know, you can review and download for when you're troubleshooting. Uh, and then again, you do have just basic diagnosis for, hey, all the different related parts. How is everything doing? Is everything good? Or are there problems coming up? Uh, um, so we'll go, take a break for questions in a second, but I just want to return. So this is the main brunt of the application of smart bin picking. All right. Um, so just the last thing again to kind of think about is on a computer, you will be using a work visual with a, one of our KUKA option packages to do signal configuration error strategy, the basic general robot setup and permissioning portion that you usually do. Right. Uh, and then you will use KUKA SIM uh, on the computer to create the environment. Um, but that all gets loaded up into the UI then. Um, quick stop here. I just want to see if there are any questions in the chat. There are a couple of questions. Um, first one is, what is the software name? Is it free for students? Uh, so the software name is KUKA.SmartBinPicking. Uh, currently, I don't know of any options that make it free for students, but um, if you are a student, we can discuss because we always want to have people learning on KUKA. Okay, and the next question is um, it's a two-part question. Does the processing time depend on the complexity of an object? And then are detections faster with a less complex object? Well, that's a good one. Generally, yes. Um, so that, and then uh, it, the processing times depend on correct the complexity of the product, how many parts are in there, the lighting and all of that. Um, and this is an area where especially we lean on the roboception people to help with improving those. So what kind of settings and configurations can we do? What kind of environment setups can we do to help make it easier and quicker for processing? And those are all the questions that I see right now. All right, thank you. All right, so moving on again. So getting into the vision side a little bit, um, we mentioned that we work with uh, Roboception and we work with them on basically loading in the CAD model and, and they create a part. Basically what they do is they'll take your CAD model and as much information as you can give them. So. We want to give them the information, the actual CAD, the part, uh, give them details about it. We want to include other images of the part, the, the bin where it's at, the environment that it's in, et cetera, and everything possible. Uh, and they run it through a digital simulation and they give out a full report that basically says, hey, here's our confidence in being able to do this part. Here are suggestions on what camera to use, what lighting systems to set up, how far away you should set everything up, uh, the camera from the bin, those different kind of things, all right? So it really just, without even having to do any physical actual things, you can digitally do uh, a lot of these simulations and setups and get 80 to 90% of the way to confirm that yes, we are going to be able to do this uh, without even having to, you know, put a part in a bin and try picking it up. So it saves a lot of time there. Uh, but again, once it's done, whether you work with Roboception or uh, you have us work with Roboception, at the end of the day, you'll get this optimized vision CAD mile, uh, model file that they have, and that will go into the CAD match software. Again, we will work with them to choose the correct camera. Um, so multiple, they have multiple options based upon part size of the part, processing, excuse me, that processing speeds necessary, the image resolution necessary, so the distance that you have, the space that you have, all of those kind of things. All right. um, so this will just be these are the options. Generally, we've seen the RC Viz core over here on the side, on the right as being the main one used for bid picking, unless you're talking very, very small, unless you're talking really small parts. But for medium to larger parts, I've seen every application I've seen has been the RC Viz core. Um, when we want to look at the actual student, you know, what is good for vision here? What, what kind of materials and parts can we do? So again, most of your metal, steel, cast iron, aluminum, copper, brass are good. Composites are also all right in plastics. Here again, you know, yes, we can do all of these, but a lot of it is, you know, it's material and geometry. So the question about processing time, yes, simpler parts process quicker, um, but also 
you know, how depend, you know, if it's too simple, if, if everything looks exactly the same and it's hard to really differentiate them, I mean, everything does look the same, that's what we want. But, you know, this can cause some, some difficulties. That being said, I have seen, you know, these, uh, this work on some fairly complicated uh, parts. Um, there's a welding cell that was done that uh, was smart been picking actually the first one where they had flat pieces that were take, being taken from multiple bins and loaded into a, uh, a jig. And these are flat pieces that were pretty, you know, it's hard to tell. It's not really obvious the edges and all of that uh, when it's in the bin, but we were able to, it took a little bit of time and configuration, but we were able to get it. Uh, I did mention there that you could use multiple uh, bins on it. So as you can see in that top right, we have that image that has three different bins with three different parts. So CAD match works best when, you know, each bin only has one part. Um, but you can load it up to do multiple parts. And in that case, again, it works best when you have multiple bins uh, within that area, not everything mixed within that same bin. Right. We can do fairly shiny and reflective ones. Obviously, if it gets super shiny and reflective, that's going to be even more harder, more difficult. Um, really big parts, especially really long parts, like you see at the bottom there, you've got the, the really long tubes that are sticking outside of the bin, especially because it's outside of the bin, these ones are not doable. It's, it's really hard to get those. Um, transparent materials like your glass and clear plastics can also be, uh, you know, not, so, not a good option for this one. Um, you know, basically, if it's incredibly shiny, if it's translucent or transparent, mm, not the best for it. Uh, also, something like black wheels. Wheels obviously can be, uh, there's less clear edges. So wheels and spheres and balls, those are harder to detect. Uh, they do not have as many edges, so it makes it more difficult. And black profiles are generally harder to discern for the vision systems than others. Okay. Uh, so then when we actually look at it, so that's the different materials that can handle on it. So when we put all this together and we want to look at applications, what we're looking at again is uh, detection and separation. So unmixed components. So generally, if you have a bin, you know, you can put in a bin with the loose chaotic parts, all of it, but it works best when it's one part per. Um, technically, it's possible to do multiple parts within it, but it's not really, they have to be different enough and there's, it's not random. You have to have all the CAD files loaded and you don't want to do too many. So Technically, it's possible to do like a sorting thing, but we don't really recommend it at this time. Uh, big application is machine tending. So if you're running a, a CNC machine tool shop, you don't want to have to have one of your staff members loading part by part into a tray that had, you know, so that the robot can just pick from the exact same spot every time, you know, depending on how many parts you're doing, that can be very time consuming for a person. So just put a bin down there under the camera, let it and let the robot go. We'll save a lot of time for your team. Uh, you can also do things like box unpacking, crate unpacking onto uh, conveyors or into other types of machines. Um, and you can do multiple boxes and crates through it. So if you have large enough boxes, you will, the main rule of thumb is that the camera needs to stay stationary uh, above it. So this is not using, you can use roboception and we can work with other cameras where if for some reason you can't mount the camera above you can do it on a robot but it's not going to be for we won't be able to use smart bin picking at this time just it doesn't have that functionality uh, and obviously you're looking at much longer cycle times there so by having the stationary cameras you can have multiple ones above it so you can be picking from a few different bins at the same time um, you can uh, you'll get a lot quicker cycle times in processing that way um, and generally, too, the robot needs to stay stationary. So there's no real set rule in terms of how many sensors you can handle at once and how many bins you can be doing. But just basically think, the, you know, what the robot can pick without having to move. Again, currently, this is version one. We do not work with putting the robot on like a linear track or moving the robot from position to position. These kind of applications can be done. So if that is an application that you have, let's talk. Uh, I've seen it done with Roboception and our cameras as well. I've seen you know, robot on a linear track and cameras on linear rails above the bins, moving from bin to bin as well. So there's a lot of flexibility within the overall, you know, vision options, but the goal with smart bin picking was to create, hey, 
For this application, stationary bin, stationary camera, stationary robot, let's create a, a solution that is as easy to use and set up and quick as possible. Um, so really kind of one of the main things, again, just when we want to look at where do we, where are these applications the good ones? So um, parts of the same type where we have the CAD model before, these are all green. Using the roboception camera system currently, we do not use other roboception. This is set up with other vision systems. Smart bin picking is set up to work with roboception. Uh, using six axis robots, stationary cameras. Uh, in the middle, doable, but consultation is necessary. There's gonna be some extra work done. So when there's not as many recognition points, so like shafts or things that are just, or the bins don't have right angles. So instead of being just a straight bin or a box, it's again, this welding one that I mentioned earlier, they had, instead of a bin, they had trays. So it was kind of like a plate or a tray with just angled sides. Uh, it took a lot more work. We were able to just, we, we had to do more configuration. We were able to get it, but it worked. Uh, we could do it. Uh, if you don't have a CAD model available, you can, Roboception actually recently added that you could do 3D scans of a product. Um, you do need to have a textured product at this point, and it is less accurate, but it is doable when necessary. Um, you also need a little bit of space to make sure that the camera has the, everything it needs. Um, and if you have no experience without with visions, you know, let's work, let's make sure you're working with the, with the team on this one. Um, out of scope, again, is other camera systems, not roboception. Anything where the camera has to be more than three meters or less than uh, 20 centimeters from the bin. Robot with an external axis, so again, on a linear axis situation there. Uh, robot guided camera, bins with more than four corners, I'm not good at this point, glass and transparent parts, and again, mixed parts in one bin. Technically, it's possible, but it's just not the optimal way, um, you know, it's technically possible to do with a few different ones, but they have to be different apart and it's not officially supported. Um, so if that's your application, let's talk, but we don't know, it, it might be, uh, it might be smart bin picking, it might be something else. All right, any other questions come up? Sue? Yep, there's um, one more question. Is the software only compatible with the KRC5 controller? Yes, so currently it is only with the KRC5. Uh, it is a brand new one, so it was made with the KRC5. I've had some interest and some talks with some people already about uh, putting it on the KRC4. So, if, you know, based on the amount of requests and applications we get for putting it on the KRC4, um, you know, we could go back uh, and see if we can get it developed to make it more backwards compatible. But at this point, only KRC5. If you are using a KRC4 and you have to do something sooner, well, we can still do it. Bin picking, we can still work with you and find the best bin picking solution, including with Roboception, but it just won't have all of the nice, easy menus and inline forms and everything that. Okay, uh, okay. So the next the next question was, can you use Roboception camera with for a KRC4? Yes. So Roboception will work with the KRC4. Uh, just smart bin picking. This package solution works with just the KRC5. Right. Any other questions? Um, Ray, if you're listening, I'll um, ask Robert your um, question outside of the presentation. Just he wants to uh, dig in deeper into KUKA Robotics. So I think that would be a good private conversation you guys could have. Okay, sounds good. And that's all the questions. All right. So that's uh, it. That's, uh, oh. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I just wanted a quick summary. Uh, again, it's this nice, easy package. So you can get easy configuration and handling, optimized path planning, uh, collision and singularity avoidance, outsource path planning for quicker cycle times, and then again, partnering with Roboception for their vision expertise. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you so much, and I'll leave it uh, back to you soon. Thank you, everybody. On behalf of KUKA Robotics, thank you so much. Again, this presentation will be available on the KUKA.com website by the end of next week. Um, 
is a holiday week. So if it's not up there, it'll be up there the week after and we will email you. So again, on behalf of us, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Industrial Intelligence.